All right, what is a proprioceptive seeker? What is a sensory seeker? What's a sensory avoider? Um, how is that working? What's going on? Well, if you've heard me talk before about how your brain processes information, it's gotta take in everything through the senses. And contrary to popular belief, there's actually seven senses. You have a movement sense and a joint, an awareness sense of where you're at. Your muscles and your joints have sensors and receptors, and those are big players in the game. Your brain is mostly mechanoreceptor driven. That means movement driven. It has to get the right amount of movement, of calming proprioceptive movement in order to do the job right, which is why they were checking motor development when you had your tiny little baby because they want to make sure that the brain is developing appropriately. Well, this is highly important for it to be able to do the rest of the job that it needs to do. And here's what we look at. We want to see how well is that brain taking in information, how well is the body moving, and organization and coordination really, really matter. That's why we take a look at how the head and neck and um, arms, shoulders, hips, um, shoulder blades, how their body is oriented because then we know that that's how their brain is perceiving information. That's the limb and joint awareness that they have. We can watch gait, we can watch how they move, how they swing their arms, move their head, move their lips, move their eyes. It's really important that that is sound, that that's smooth, that's a, that that is organized. Otherwise the brain has to do guesswork. And the last thing it wants to do is guesswork because when it doesn't have proprioception, it has something called nociception. And nociception means noise. It's, it's loud, it's unorganized, and it's basically a fill in the blank. And it's something that your body and brain does not want. So it's gonna look for proprioception in other ways. And here's what I'm gonna tell you about proprioception. There is a high, high, high amount of dense proprioceptive fibers in your spine. 60%, so that's over half of the proprioceptive fibers to your brain are in your spine. And over half of that, the upper cervical is 33% of those. So a really big deal that your brain is getting the right feedback from your spine. And here's a very interesting part. Your eyes can always see what's in front of you. You're gonna see your hands, you're gonna see your feet, you can see your body move, but you can never see your spine. So your brain relies on those proprioceptive receptors. So your brain relies on what we call the eyes of the spine. They're little stretch receptors or muscle spindles that any time the, the spine moves appropriately with the right amount of movement, especially that upper cervical spine, over 33%, like I said, is in that upper cervical spine of all proprioception. That's where the brainstem is. That's where the vestibular tracts are. There's so much happening near that brainstem. It's gotta get the right feedback. Um, it's gonna rely on that to bend and move appropriately. And if it doesn't, once again, we're in that noisy, nociceptive refeed, feedback instead, and your brain's gonna look for proprioception somewhere else. And it's gonna look for them in a couple different areas that have high dense proprioceptive um, feedback, and that's in the hands, that's in the feet, that's in the groin, and that's in the jaw. So you can just imagine what they're gonna do um, or you're gonna see with a child who needs a little bit more proprioceptive feedback, they're probably gonna be pretty bouncy. They're not getting it from the spine and the upper cervical spine near that brainstem, so they're gonna be trying to get it in their hands. They might be the nail biters, because then you're getting it kind of twofold, um, not only in the jaw, but also in the fingers themselves. They're probably gonna be a thumb sucker. They might be a head banger, or they were when they were little, trying to get that upper cervical spine to get the right feedback. Um, they might also be the knuckle poppers or pullers on the fingers. Um, you might see them tapping and moving their feet often. They might be toe walkers. You're gonna watch for some of these indicators that their brain's not getting the right feedback that it needs and it is filling in the blanks. And here's the biggest problem that we see when we're just filling in the blanks. The brain is having to do so much guesswork, it really stresses it out. And what we found is that 90% of the brain at any given moment is just doing proprioception. So you, if you can imagine, it's gotta sit and take in its environment. It's really, really it takes a lot of coordination for us to be able to just stand up, sit down, move in and handwrite, I mean, talk. There's so much articulation, there's so much that has to happen with those muscle fibers and that feedback to the brain. We are just, we just kind of take that for granted as somebody who can move their body well until 
you see someone who is off balance, um, well, whether it's chemically off balance, we've seen people that's kind of self-induced, if you know what I mean, um, <laughs> off balance. We've also seen people who are off balance because they don't have the right movement, movement and the feedback to the brain. We've seen people who are unorganized. They might actually have a, a neurological insult or a stroke something that had damaged the brain, traumatic um, brain injury, they're not getting the right feedback, or um, a spinal cord injury themselves. I mean, we all know that Christopher Reeves, who broke that upper cervical spine, had no, absolutely no feedback from here down, um, and unfortunately passed away from an infection because his body just couldn't fight it and realized that there was a, that there was a problem there. So when your brain is being sucked down by 90% of non not getting what it needs 90% of the time, then it has to fill in the blank with that guesswork, but it also has to run a lot of other parts of our body. 300 trillion bits of information reach our brain every second. We're consciously aware of 50 of those signals. So mind blowing um, amount that is just happening completely orchestrated without our conscious awareness of it. It's a pretty big deal. And what we don't want our brain doing is getting bogged down, trying to look for proprioception, getting um, completely exhausted, which is where we see a lot of people come in including children, that they've just burnt out their adrenals, they've burnt out their core, they were constantly moving and looking for that feedback because the brain has a lot of other things to run. And what we'll start to see suffer as well is the gut, the immune system, and the endocrine system, being, meaning the hormones. And they'll be kind of undersized or oversized. Um, or for women, we know what that feels like when our hormones are off, um, menstruation may be off, everything that we see as far as metabolism and our adrenals and the way we handle our stress can definitely be off and get to that deeper layer of stress. So great things to do. Of course, number one is come get some more education about that. Come to our perfect storm. We've got another workshop that's coming up um, here on February 6th. That's going to be an important one to go to, to get some more information on that science and how that neural feedback um, goes to the brain and how it gets dysfunctional in the first place, right? A lot of people are curious about that. Well, why would my brain not be getting the right feedback? Why would not be, and why would it not be moving appropriately? And we undercover, we uncover a lot of those hidden pieces and some pretty deep layers that we go through that'll help you, um, lots of um, components to this process. And then some happy, great, ways to be able to unwind and undo and unwire and um, get rewired for less stress and better proprioception and better movement and better better brain development and handling emotions better, handling behaviors better, sleeping more soundly, digesting food more soundly, feeling like um, you belong really because I know when you get to a certain point of stress, when you get disconnected from yourself, brain and body just does not feel well, it's not moving well, it's not thinking well and and pretty soon the self-esteem is being affected, the emotional components are playing into it, and it can really start to affect the way we not only feel about ourselves, but our children are feeling about themselves and feeling about their friendships and relationships. So it's pretty important that we've got um, an amazing God-given potential that we can reach and that our kids know that there's nothing wrong with them, that there is a lot of great things that are going on with them that we can make even better and that their brain and body are supposed to be healthy and communicating smoothly and effectively and let's find the best way to be able to do that. So I encourage you guys to come and get some education on that and take the next step and at least learn and engage in that um, conference or workshop that we have or watching a lot more of these videos that we have. Go on our playlist, get on our YouTube channel because we're talking about this. We're talking about neurological stress. So we want to find the cause of this, right? We aren't about necessarily about finding tips and tools to manage some of the symptoms, which are all great and fantastic and lovely. We want to make sure we get down to the root cause and make sure we help that brain calm, self-regulate and be able to heal and be healthy. I'll talk to you guys soon.